Right now we need to discuss more about that. We have the option to discuss with Dr. William Hanicum, who is a, a Deputy Director in Global Health in the Gates Foundation, focusing exclusively in TB vaccines. <laughs> Previously he was Director in the, in the South African Tuberculosis Vaccine Initiative and the University of Cape Town. Dr. Hanicum will present about the the current strategy and pipeline from the Nobel TB vaccine. Okay, um, so thank you very much for this opportunity. So I thought I'd, uh, in this very short talk, I'd uh, highlight two advances that were published last year um, uh, first, and then see whether we can do even better than that. So the first one, obviously we heard about BCG just now, these, two, these are the two guys that, that made it, Comet and Giran. And BCG should be given. It's a safe vaccine. Um, uh, it's very good in protecting children against tuberculosis. But the issue is that um, uh, we have a bimodal TB epidemic if you look at age. So TB is common in small children and then it becomes more common in adolescents and adults. And children do not spread the disease, so intervening there is not going to do much into, or has going to have very little impact, if any impact, on the TB epidemic. Um, but rather we want to focus on adolescents and adults. So. Um, so the, uh, the first advance that I want to mention is then a study that looked at whether BCG um, could be used also as a second dose in adolescents um, to prevent tuberculosis. So this study uh, enrolled about 900 adolescents who were quantifiron negative at the time that they were enrolled. Um, and they were given one of two vaccines. Uh, the other is a subunit vaccine, a, a new subunit vaccine. And they were followed up for two years. And infection was the endpoint, so quantifiorin conversion to positive. And so these were the results. Um, when, the pri when you look at the primary outcome, which was any quantifiorin conversion uh, after 84, day 84 days after the vaccination, there was really no difference between the three arms. But what we do know now, and this is a phenomenon that we're learning about uh, more um, in the field, is that quantifierons can revert. So um, here you see the three different groups um, that received placebo, H4, or BCG, and you can see that quite a number of, of those that converted reverted their quantifierons. So if you only look at those that had a sustained positive quantifieron over time, at the top row, then there was vaccine efficacy. So the vaccine efficacy was 45% uh, for BCG. The 95% confidence intervals were about zero, obviously very wide because this is an early phase uh, trial. Um, but, uh, but we could see uh, prevention of infection. Now, what does this mean? So the, the, the models, if you model this, you have modelers to look at this and see whether this could have an impact on the TB epidemic. It could have a massive impact. However, we have to be extraordinarily careful. And this, this, this picture was taken in Malawi. So uh, two large phase four studies, one in Malawi and one in Brazil, has shown that BCG revaccination has very little effect, if any effect, on prevention of disease, of very different studies. So we have to be very careful in move, moving forward. So I think the first thing that, that needs to be done is to see if we can actually repeat this signal and show whether prevention of infection is actually true in a much larger study before applying it much more widely. Ultimately, we need to show that it prevents disease. So on then to a new vaccine that may prevent disease. And so um, this is a vaccine, uh, M72, made by GSK, that contains two mycobacterial proteins and then an adjuvant um, that is uh, very, very potent. It's, all, it's also an adjuvant in various other vaccines, such as the new malaria vaccine and in Shingrix, the shingles vaccine. So this, was, this vaccine was given to um, 
people with latent TB infection um, and uh, in, in southern and East Africa, and they were followed for two years. Um, and basically, there was a 54% protective effect with, again, confidence intervals that, above, that were above zero uh, in preventing disease from this vaccine. Um, so that just to let you know that if you go to the union meeting in, in November, you'll, you'll hear um, the results of three years of follow-up uh, from, from this study. So that, what, what would this actually mean? So again, um, I mentioned modeling earlier. This is a model for India, and, and I'm not going to go through the actual slide because I don't have time during this presentation, but I want to say that the models basically show that if the, if the vaccine had five years duration of efficacy, um, it will, as a single intervention, if it were to be introduced now, by 2050, in India, as a single intervention, if you do nothing else, what these people here are, are suggesting we do, or whatever, um, it will have a 40 to 60 percent, it will re result in a 40 to 60 percent reduction in the incidence of TB. And that is just for India and other areas such as South Africa, we think even a higher effect. So this is extraordinarily promising and uh, needs to be followed up. And there's now lo loads of, in of discussions with many international groups to see what the next steps should be. Um, but clearly a phase three is needed to test this vaccine. So we've also sponsored for, at the Gates Foundation some cost effectiveness studies. So one of the things that you have to decide is before you move ahead is, is this actually going to be affordable? And if you take into account uh, for, um, with, with, in, with incremental uh, cost effectiveness ratio. So, for example, the cost of current therapy and what, what would be averted in terms of therapy, it's very cost effective, um, this vaccine. No matter what scenario you look at, if you look at just one scenario, we give us to 10 year olds um, in both those that quantify on positive and negative, and you have 80% coverage in South Africa, you can clearly see that you're going to save money by introducing this vaccine. So, can we do even better? So, there's a load of other vaccines that are also in clinical trials. Um, uh, hopefully, some of them will also uh, uh, turn out to, to show some, some results that are interesting. I think we are really interested in the phase three results, uh, phase three studies that are ongoing. Um, and uh, we'd, we'd have to see uh, whether any of these actually pan out. But in the interim, because there's incredible risk to these um, to these these two major advances that I mentioned, for example, BCG, um, we don't know if it would prevent disease. We don't know how we would deliver BCG in areas of high HIV prevalence. Uh, M72 is a is a difficult vaccine to manufacture. There's, there are constraints there. For those of you who need to get the shingles vaccine, you can you already know that the shingles vaccine is not available because of manufacturing issues, etc. So there are risks. So I think development really uh, should move forward. And amongst the new vaccines that are out there that are in the preclinical space, so they haven't re used, reached um, the human, is a CMV vaccine. Now CMV in affects virtually all of us. Um, and uh, and what, what these investigators did is they took the CMV vaccine and they, they, they ripped out the guts, the dangerous guts of the vaccine, and put in some TB antigens in that and gave this to a non-human primate who was then challenged. And these are the results from two studies, and it's something that we've never seen in the non-human primate. Um, so you can see the unvaccinated and those that develop disease and those that uh, were completely protected by this vaccine. So this vaccine overall has about a 68% efficacy in this model, and we will go into the human pretty soon with this vaccine. There's even more, <laughs> and this is uh, these are results from uh, the the um, VRC um, in in at the NIH, where they tested various routes of BCG vaccination. Um, and what you see here on the on the in the graph is the, is colony forming units, and on in in the in the uh, picture, 
you can see um, results of a PET CT scan where inflammation is red uh, that you pick up with this, this kind of scanning. So this happens when you do not vaccinate a monkey and you give what you see in front of you is the amount of disease and bugs that they will actually have. If you then um, give low dose ID, the current dose of BCG that we give, we can see you get a little bit of protection. Um, if you use a higher dose, perhaps a little bit more protection. And what was pretty disappointing was that if you give it by aerosol, either in combination with intradermal or not, um, it didn't look as if it was any better. But look at this. If you give BCG IV, uh, um, and uh, there was virtually, there was sterilizing protection in the majority of the monkeys that you can see um, uh, on with those red dots and, and also on the PET CT scans where you can see virtually no disease. Now, um, uh, no one is going to uh, promote giving IV BCG in the field. I think it will never be given IV to anyone, okay? I just want to say that up front. But, but what this allows us is um, uh, to look for correlates of protection. So, uh, so I want to make a point in our, t our development programs, unless we understand protection or have correlates of protection, we're not going to get very far. So the, the, IV, the IV BCG study in the monkey allows us to do this by down titrating the IV dose. Um, the clinical studies that I mentioned would allow us to. So I think the, the, the way to do better is to get to a rational t vaccine design where we learn from these human and non-human projects exactly what those responses are needed and what TB antigens should be included. And we now have the tools, and I think we're going to enter a completely new era. So uh, we are on the verge of new vaccines and strategies with potential to save millions of lives. Uh, BCG may be repurposed to protect adolescents and adults against TB. Uh, M72 may protect against TB disease against persons with LTBI. This has to be confirmed. And then I think discovery and early development uh, efforts remain absolutely critical. Thank you very much.